When we look at any of the clinical research in regards to incline dumbbell press, not straight bar, I'm not talking about straight bar today. I don't think I'll ever talk about straight bar. But an incline dumbbell press, okay, geography versus anatomy. Is there an upper chest? Yeah, there's an upper region. Uh, the clavicular fibers, that's fine. I just want everybody out there to realize that there's more anterior shoulder girdle muscles in an incline dumbbell press, which is cool. You can train it, okay? But don't think upper chest. You're not gonna build your chest any differently or, or get the shelf, so to speak, those bodybuilding terms, tie-ins, all these crazy terms that we hear in muscle and fiction. Um, sorry, muscle and fitness, for all you readers out there. The bottom line is, you're gonna get more anterior shoulder girdle muscles in the incline. So I want you to understand that this is a great hypertrophy move for the anterior shoulder girdle muscle. So instead of being in that position, let's say I wanted you to be in that position where you're doing a regular press. So come back, go into a regular shoulder press. Obviously you would never do anything like this, head back, where you're pushing up here. This is not what we want. We wanna come close like this, that same anatomical position. Everything is in line, the dumbbell is in the same line parallel to the humerus. What he has going on here now is he has a slight incline so that as he presses up, go ahead, as he holds this position, this is a very cool exercise. This load is now trickling down the arm into the bench, okay? I could bring it down one more notch, but this is good. He has more scapula anchoring than the load like Justina just did on the bench, going through her ischial tuberosities, going through her sit bones, going through her butt, trickling back up the system. This is far more emphasis, stimulus, volume, than in a seated position or a standing position. This is for you bodybuilders out there. I want massive muscle hypertrophy, I want strength, I want to do an overhead press. This is the way we perform an overhead press. This is the way the joints were meant to move in an overhead press freely, okay? We got part of the supraspinatus, then we kick into the deltoid. We got a little bit, not much, very little of the medial or mid fibers of the deltoid, 100% of the anterior delt, and obviously anything in a press movement that extends the elbow is tricep, okay? Now, for those of you who might feel some pain in certain ranges of motion, keep going. Maybe we stop there. Come on down. Pause, come on up, maybe we stop there and we don't go full extension. Think about it. What range can you control the load? Maybe we go halfway up, both arms, both arms always. Come down slowly. Good, come back up. So we stop at the bottom range. You have to figure out the range you can control the load pain free and then work up to it. Eventually you'll be able to go all the way. Now if you have a hard time doing this exercise, my recommendations to you, hold this by your side. Okay, well, my recommendation is just do a single arm, come on up, and hold the position. That's it. You have to straighten that arm up all the way. This is your range of motion. You're going to hold that position five, ten seconds. This is right from the get. This is right out of the gate. This is the first thing you do, and then bring it down in a closed pack position like a sling. Okay, you're ready to do another repetition. You bring it back up, hold the position, lock it out, lock it up, press to the ceiling, press to the ceiling and bring it back down, okay? This is gonna strengthen that joint capsule so that you can have the ability to do an overhead press without creating any stress and strain in that, in that system. So remember, scapula anchoring, muscle hypertrophy bodybuilding. You wanna do some functional exercises, you could actually do them in a seated position. If you wanna do more stabilization, go very light, unilateral movements is the overhead press single arm.